Hi. Hello, hi five people. How you doing? We're in the middle of coronavirus, you probably know that. Um, okay, I'll take your mind off it for a minute. To um, what I'm going to talk about today is tell you what I know, you know, over 40 years of messed around with speakers, about the effects, I suppose, and the, you know, what are the, uh, the issues with like uh, configurations, and I mean by that how many drivers, and also a bit about where those drivers go, but you know, that's three way, four way, two way, two way. So I'm going to go through each one and then we'll go into detail about sound and you know what's a good like good things and what's bad things but uh, firstly I'm just going to go through each one and talk a little bit about crossover frequencies. Okay well let's start here. So that's a Spender BC1. It's quite a famous speaker. You buy those by the way for like maybe I don't know 4 50 something like that. They're really nice. Now, this is, it looks like a three-way speaker. In, 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 technically, it's got three drivers, but really, it's a woofer and two tweeters, yeah? It's not a woofer, a mid-range, and a tweeter. So, this woofer does the low frequencies, of course. This tweeter comes in at about 3,000 hertz, yeah? And then this super tweeter comes in at about 12,000 hertz. So really, this is a woofer with two tweeters. Um, 12,000 hertz or 10,000 hertz, you know, some of my age, you probably only hear up to like 14,000 hertz. But I can hear that tweeter, that super tweeter there. It's a Coles super tweeter. And uh, if you were to unplug those Coles, even if you put your ear in, you can't hear that much, yeah? It's like very high. But if you were to take them off or cover them up, you will notice the sound gets a bit deader, yeah? So, you know, I could definitely hear those tweeters still. Uh, so that's a three-way speaker, but really it's a two-way woofer and two tweeters. Okay, now we've got here four-way speakers. To me, you don't really ever want more than a four-way speaker, you know what I mean? Because you have to uh, transition between all these drivers and that's a hard thing to do, yeah? Quite frankly, it's not done super well in this. It's a Bang & Olufsen speaker, this S75. If you were to look at the crossover on this, it's not a complicated thing. But it, it looks good <laughs> with all its drivers. And you know, there, there's a plus in having a load of drivers. You've got more speakers moving more air. So you, you will get a big sound and you will have a speaker dedicated to the mid-range. And that is something that is really, you know, that is a good thing. And that is a thing that something like a lot of two ways just miss out on real focus in the mid-range, you know. And then most people are kind of used to that, but it's, not, it's good to have a dedicated mid-range driver. So, okay, uh, this, so I'll just do the crossover frequencies. So bass drive obviously that's doing the very lowest frequencies this mid-range usually they come in at about 400 hertz yeah this is quite a big domed well i'll call it a tweeter or you know you could possibly call it a mid-range thing but this is this will be somewhere between this one and this one so i mean truly i don't know but probably comes in at something like 2000 hertz and this one, I also truly don't know, but this is obviously doing the very highest frequencies, yeah? And it, you can see by the size of the cone that this is an ordinary tweeter, really. This would be used in other speakers as a tweeter, maybe with a bass driver, you know, just tweeter and bass driver. But that's a kind of... But as you look at this super tweeter, the dome is smaller. That means it's getting, doing the really higher frequencies, so the bigger those domes, most times the lower the frequencies the bigger the movements it can do. Uh, so yeah, okay. So this one, probably like almost most all speakers, that tweeter's coming in at around 3000 hertz. So bass move tweeter, and this one again, 
coming in about 3000 hertz. That, by the way, if you don't know, that's a, a Rogers LS358. They're like a thousand pounds. This is a Rogers LS3i or A, I can't remember. These are like a hundred quid. They don't sound as good. Okay, but I'll talk about those a bit later. Um, let me also talk, let's, let's also do cone materials, because this is very interesting, because if you know what cone materials do, you can pretty much look at things um, and you'll know a fair, you know, a fair accuracy what it's going to sound like, you know? So let's do this one, right? So we've got this, I don't know if that's a Beckstream cone, plastic cone, that's a metal dome tweeter. This is from the 80s, I think. Metal dome tweeters, when they first came out, in particular, are very spiky, yeah? Just could get harsh. Literally, the cone material has its own sound signature, and, you know, you, you might, you know, it sounds metal, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's kind of as simple as that. Uh, you know, they are aluminium speaker cones, and they kind of sound like it, you know? Paper cones, they have, you kind of know what it's going to sound like. So like, you know, metal dome tweeter, spiky. Uh, we don't have a silk dome tweeter. This might be a silk dome tweeter, but a soft dome tweeter is a more gentle tweeter. Yeah, it's a bit more magical. It's not, got, it's not sharp, it's not edgy. Uh, this is a plastic dome. Uh, that's a plastic dome, that's a plastic dome. They kind of say a plastic dome you might describe as being in the middle between a metal edgy thing, sp sp spiky thing, uh, and a silk dome tweeter would be the most, you know, you can just tell, you know, paper cones, right? These are, this is paper, this is paper. Paper is, it's pretty nice and light and rigid. Paper cones are very responsive, yeah, do you know what I mean? Uh, this speaker from the 70s, a lot of these, you know, early 70s stuff, there's a lot of paper cones about. I mean, it's kind of the, the first material, I suppose, for, for cones was paper. They're very quick, very agile. But you might get a little bit of distortion, yeah? There's that, I don't know, they're a little bit wayward, just a little bit, maybe too flimsy. When you get to something like this, with this is this is quite a robust cone. If you measured distortion figures, this would be lower than this, yeah. But this has gone too far, if you ask me, in its attempt to destroy or to control all distortion, to the point where it's just lifeless. There's just no life and fun in this one, you know. I don't like this speaker, I've got to tell you. Uh, so there's, you know, there's this playoff between life and uh, control. So, you, you know, you get a, you, you, this speaker will be very lively and exciting with its paper cones and its four cones, yeah. Uh, and this will measure as a sign of like very, very minimal distortion, but it's just kind of had all the fun taken out of it. Um, have I said everything I need to say about cones and crossovers? Okay, let's just maybe talk about what sounds best and, you know, why is that, yeah? Well, again, I'm, I'm going to pick on this one, right? I mean, there's loads of two-way speakers like this that have the problem that this has, uh, which is this bass driver is trying to do the bass, and the mid-range really, things like vocals, and then the tweet is doing its thing. It can't really pull this off properly. So the mid-range kind of suffers, yeah? The accuracy, the snare drum, the real spaciousness in the mid-range, you're not going to get it there. With, mo with lots of two-way speakers, yeah? Even these Spenders, which are famously good, you know, and they are good things, the mid-range isn't attacking, yeah? 
The mid range is a little suppressed. It's fairly suppressed, actually, I would say. Well, not suppressed, it's there, but it's a bit further back, yeah? Because it doesn't have a cone that is there just to do the mid range frequencies. You know, if you have a driver that's trying to do vocals and the bass guitar and the bass drum, let's say, that activity of moving, doing the big bass movement, and then it's trying to do these sort of mid frequencies simultaneously, yeah, the bass kind of destroys the mid range, yeah. So the mid range is a bit choked, a bit, you know, a bit messed up, and a bit recessed. It doesn't, you know, it just doesn't, there's not, there's not a dedicated driver to do the mid-range. So, uh, what I'm getting at here, really, what I'm coming round to, is the point that I would say, the ultimate, you know, and it might be expensive, is a well-engineered, with a nice crossover, you know, and nice drivers, and it's probably good if it's new, it's probably going to be very expensive, a nice three-way speaker and what I mean by three-way is not three cones the same size because that to me that is not the ultimate speaker I mean a bass driver a mid-range and a tweeter maybe even a super tweeter as well I'm not saying four is is wrong but uh, you know there, there's not that many I, I'm aware of that have drivers doing different frequencies now there used to be a speaker called the IMF monitor this is a really nice and you know well-engineered thing, and it had the same two 